I know that you were close to your late sister and that Irene kept nothing from you. Then you understand how I couldn't violate her trust even after we lost her. Stella Curtis understands why you did what you did. Why don't you let him worry about healing all of those old family wounds? Isn't that right, Nurse Johnson? Whatever you say, Doctor. Well, you know what? It won't be long before you're the one asking all the questions, and they start calling you Dr. Johnson. <laughs> <laughs> Epiphany, you're starting to be a doctor? Mm -hmm. I had no idea. Well, I missed my chance once to be a doctor, and I thought it was time to give it another shot. Well, good for you. I mean, what good is living if we can't dream? And dream big. <laughs> Stella, you remind me of someone I used to know. It's good to see you both. But, uh, I gotta ask, how'd you know where to look? Well, TJ may be a doctor, but he clearly inherited his mother's detective skills. I found a repair receipt from a few months ago in your clarinet case, and we figured that was as good a lead as any. So I called the shop, spoke to Mr. Purdy, who agreed to speak with me if I bought him dinner. So, you know the rest. Man. You two are regular Sherlock Holmes and Dr. Watts. <laughs> Curtis know you here? Absolutely. We have had enough secrets, don't you think? You know what? Why don't I go call Curtis right now and let him know that no, we found no, you? No, 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 Molly. Don't do that. Uh, whatever went down between you and Uncle Curtis, once we get back home, we can clear the air and talk it all out. I'm sorry, TJ, but <clears throat> that's not going to happen.